Well, I was contacted by a friend on Facebook who has an arcade himself and had a bunch of bad monitor chassis and asked if I could take a look. I said, eh, sure, why not? So he sent them my way and there's, count them, one, two, three, four K7500s and 17400. These are all advertised as not working. These, the 7400, these two 75s are complete. These two 75s are missing the remote board, but that's not a big deal because I can just use the remote board from these two. Uh, but they're all advertised as not working. And I did give them the cursory look over, and they're all complete, but they're in various states of disarray. The 7400 are, has new caps on it. The rest of these are all original caps. This one has... Uh, actually, no, I take that back. This one has new caps. You can see somebody marked them. Uh, but, yeah, so this one, I think, has new caps. Uh, this one... Yeah, this one has new caps, too. I, I'm, I'm mistaken. Hmm. I was going off assumption. This one definitely has original caps because this is the 50 volt 10, uh, um, yeah, 50 volt 10 picofarad bipolar cap that goes from this size down to a little tiny one. Let's see if, yeah, see, <laughs> a little tiny one uh, right there. That is this one. That, that one right there. Um, so okay, and this one's that way too. So these two are original. These two have new caps, and this one has new caps. So we got four 7500s and one 7400. Did I say that right? Four 75s and one 74? That's hard to say. So I'll get all this uh, one by one taken care of. So because I have a 7400 tube up here already from previous repairs just sitting over here in the corner and the 75s are downstairs, I'll put these away and I'll start with a 7400. Um, so yeah, let me uh, get everything set up and we'll start working on the 7400, inspect it and see what we can find. Well, all right, 7400. Uh, let's first things first here. Let's get rid of all of our ancillary stuff. So we'll disconnect our remote board. I always use two hands at the same time, not try and wiggle it because you'll bend the pins, which isn't a big deal if you do, but it's still uh, not desirable. And the same thing here. We'll just pull that off the neck board, disconnect our G2 wire and fold open our wire for the focus now this is up and out of the way so now you can turn this around and have it this other stuff not be in your way so i prefer to do that uh, like i say this has had new caps and i like that someone has done what i do and when they change the caps out they put the marks on them uh, you can see the lines and sharpie on these so i actually that's one of the things that i like when someone does that here's another one of those bipolar caps that goes from a giant cap to a tiny one so you can always tell if there's been new caps by if someone has replaced the giant bipolar cap with the smaller one you know times change technology changes so um all right so we're assuming this doesn't work so i guess what we'll do is we'll start with our uh, voltage regulator which again is q101 this guy over here and we'll flip this around and we'll do some zooming in here and Diode, a little bit too much. All right, so our voltage regulator should be these tri triangular tabs here. One, one, two, three, these three. And we'll go negative on the base, and then we'll touch each leg. This should be, you know, 0.6 and I think 1.0 something or other. So we should read our, our diode. Is that, okay, this should be a docket diode. There you go, 0.5. This should be one point something or other. Yep, so that's good. Um, just to make sure we don't have anything in the power supply that's shorted other than the voltage regulator, we'll go ahead and test the, uh, what is it? It's R104, uh, which is this ceramic one, should be 10K ohm. And if any of this other stuff was shorted, this would read shorted as well, so let's just test that. 10K ohm, good, all right. So let's do our uh, switch mode power supply chip again. You want to have the the power supply section here facing away from you, and you'll go back to diode checker, and we'll test these two pads. Should read like a diode. I believe it's negative on the right. This should be a diode, or do I have it backwards? There we go. Backwards. Uh, okay, 0.6. I guess negative on the left side. 
So that's good. This should read the same thing, give or take. That's good. This should be around, I believe, what was it, one point, one point something? Yeah, one point seven. That's good. And this should be one point something. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. That's those are the readings you should read somewhat around there, close to it when you read that switch mode power supply chip. So that is good. Um, that's not shorted. So I'm betting our power supply is good. Now on the 7400, there is a specific um, capacitor here, and it's a film, metal film capacitor. It's C121, and when you go to read it, uh, you want to make sure it's not shorted. You can do it on you can do it on continuity or diode ticker or resistance doesn't matter. Um, but you want to basically make sure, I'll do it on continuity, you want to make sure this isn't shorted. If C121 is shorted, you're going to be blowing your HOT, which we'll check here in a minute, but we'll make sure this isn't shorted. If C121 is good, uh, it's highly likely the HOT is still good. So we will test C121, get out of here, flyback wire, we'll touch each side, and it's not shorted. So that's good. Uh, that's one thing that can kill HOTs um, if it's bad. All right, what next? Let's check our uh, let's check our poly caps. Uh, these three caps in here. Um, what is it? C seven twenty four, C seven twenty one, and C seven twenty three. These three, one, two, and three. Those three poly caps can be shorted, causing problems. So we'll test that. Those two are these two here. That's good. These two here. And these two here. All right. You heard it beat quickly, but that's because it probably had a charge in it still. So those three poly caps are good. I guess we can now test our HOT, which again is this guy there, which we can actually do from the top side, which, well, let's do it from the bottom half. It's these three guys, it's this triangle right here. One, two, three. So we'll go negative on the base. And then we'll go, if I can do this, there we go. One leg, oh, sorry, diode. 0.5, that's good, and 0.5. Well, there you go. Uh, that should be everything that I can imagine that will keep it from coming on. There's also um, D707, which is this, this is D707. It's just a diode. So a uh, negative leg is on the left. So if we do our diode ticker on just these two legs, You'll see that it should read like a diode. All right, that's good. And then you got, uh, what was that one? Q1, Q710. Sometimes Q710 can be bad. That's the third one over here. Uh, we can just go to these three legs right here. If we go to the base, it should be just like, uh, uh, I believe it's NPN transistor. One leg will be a, a diode, other leg will be one. It, will, it reads like the voltage regulator. One leg should be 0.5, the other leg should be one point something. So if we go to this leg, there's our diode, 0.5, you know, give or take, round up, round down, and then 1.0 something. Oh, no, I had that backwards. My mistake. This is a correct reading. One side, both sides should read like a diode, but this is the this is the actual functional side of the transistor. This side here is the other side of the output. So um, this is a good reading, 0.5 and 0.6. This is a good, if either, if either one of these legs were shorted to the center, It'd be bad, but it's not, so it's good. So, sorry about that. Uh, well, I can't think of anything else that would cause this to not at least power on. You know, there's no reason to really go through and test all the individual components here in the power circuit because the this isn't shorted, and our voltage regulator is not shorted, and we have 10K ohm on here, so none of this is shorted. You know, I it's a, it's a bit unnecessary to go through and test every component until you at least power on and see what you get. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, Q, which one was this? This was Q7, I forgot what this one is. This is the transistor that if this is bad, it won't power up either. I forgot what that one is. Q703, yeah, Q703. Q703 is another one you want to inspect because sometimes with the heat sink on there, it'll bend back and forth and bust. You can actually see somebody put epoxy on there from the factory. It's the first time I've ever seen that. This can actually bend back and forth and break the legs, and it can also be open, which we know from my previous videos. And then, so to take this plastic retainer off, you just push down. Put your finger here in the middle and push down while you slide out, but you want to be careful you don't slice your fingertips open on the bottom of the board. So you just push down and then kind of slightly 
wiggle it off. Well, there you go. So we got to take that off the Test Q703. And it is, it's these three right here. Let's zoom in a bit. It's these three right here. So again, negative on the, oh, sorry, it's these three. These three. Nothing's hooked up to this. On a 7400, there's nothing here. On a 500, there is. But we'll go to center and 0.6 and yeah, that's good. You're looking again just to make sure neither one of these legs are shorted to the center. So there's our diode for the transistor and there's the other side of the output. So there it is. That's about the last thing I could think of. Um, you know, R811 goes bad all the time. R811, I've already made a video about black and white image. R811 is right here. This is R811 on the 7500, I think it's up over here. Uh, and the U5000, I think, it's up, but on this one, it's right there. I could be mistaken, but we'll test We'll test it when we get to the 7500. But it's, again, it should read between 50, 50 K ohm and 100 K ohm, somewhere in between there. So if we test this in circuit here, one side and the other. Well, it seems a bit low, but it's climbing up. There's the 50 threshold. So RA11 is good. Well, uh, hopefully it doesn't have vertical collapse or something, which you can you can test. Uh, generally speaking, let's zoom out. Well, I'll, let's leave it in. Generally speaking, the vertical IC is this guy over here, and there's a diode right in here. That you can check this diode right here. If this diode is good, generally speaking, that your vertical IC should be good. If the diode is shorted, your vertical IC is probably shorted. So you can test that somewhat easily. Again, just like any other diode, negative on the side with the stripe. Oh, wrong way. And we'll sneak in here, negative on the side with the stripe, and 0 0.580, or 0.5, ground down. I just say 0.5, so. All right, I don't see anything wrong with this. Unless the flyback is bad, um, I don't see any other issues, so let's Get it hooked up and turn it on and see what happens. And maybe it works just fine. I can't say. Uh, let's hook our neck board back up. Get our G2 wire plugged in. Get our neck board focus wire plugged in. board and it's always a good idea to inspect your neck board and your remote board because you never know the condition these are going to be in it looks this is a much newer this is one of the latest releases of the 7400 because you can see it's got the much better heat sinks on there so this is a very late revision of the 7400 um, let's zoom in on here uh, some of this isn't the best. These are kind of oxidized here from the heat, as well as these these here are oxidized from heat. Um, this pad's lifted, very common with these. I don't know if we'll be able to, you can kind of see it wiggle a bit, maybe not. Um, yeah, so this needs some reflow, but not nothing too bad. Everything's connected, so I'm not going to worry about it. But you want to inspect this to make sure you don't have, you know, tr broken traces. You know, if you're missing blue, red, or green, make sure you don't have broken traces. Uh, a lot of times, if you're missing a color, it's most likely these. But if you're if you have a color that's completely overdriven, like let's say your entire screen is nothing but blue, completely blue, you can have um, a shorted transistor. You could have, well, the the main transistor could be shorted. One of your resistors could be open. Uh, either any of these three transistors could be open. Well, according to, like, let's say it's all blue. It's all blue. I, you know, red, I think it's red, green, blue. So we'll say this one's blue. If the screen is completely blue, you could have a, an open resistor here. You could have a shorted transistor. This transistor could be shorted. You could have, um, I've seen this resistor go bad right here next to the socket. You could have any of these transistors. These transistors will also short and cause it to be all one color. Um, what else? There was, 
there was something else. Oh, I actually recently had one that was all blue and the chip was bad on the on the uh, neck board. I replaced the blue transistor. This transistor was shorted and the chip was shorted. So I changed out the transistor and the chip and it fixed the all blue image. But it uh, in all of the years I've been doing this, this chip, this is the first time ever the chip was actually bad. Usually it's going to be one of these transistors here. Uh, open resistor, a shorted main transistor. One of these transistors is shorted. Uh, I think that's about it. This resistor here, I think, gave me an all all uh, one color image one time. Um, I think this resistor shorted too. I can't remember. But just a quick uh, guide on the neck on these neck boards here, if you're unfamiliar with that. So uh, then we'll give this a, a remote board a good look. Make sure none of the pots are broken. That's important. If any of these are broken or not connected, and you turn it on, you could fry your vertical IC. But that looks okay. Um, on the back side of here, we didn't look at the back side. Let's zoom out a bit. Uh, it's very clean. Whoever did the cap kit cleaned it up after themselves very well. Um, I don't see anything that's jumping out at me as far as cracked or broken solder joints. Uh, of course, a lot of the stuff could use a good reflow. The header pins over here can use a good reflow because some of them are on the brink. I can see the solder barely holding on, but it's not cracked yet. So, uh, well, nothing left to do but test it. I'll get it hooked up, and I'll cut back, and we'll see what happens. Actually, one more thing I wanted to mention. I did some reflowing, and as I was doing reflowing, I forgot to mention that. On these neck boards, you want to make sure that everything is evenly spaced. If you have one of these, and these are all hunched together, it's going to generate more heat. So you want to make sure, you want to gently make sure and spread these apart so they're somewhat as far apart as as is aesthetically pleasing something like, about like that that will reduce the heat that they're generated and don't like you know a header on your car you don't want uh, your header on your car to be touching something or close to something else that could um, increase the heat so you want to have these spread apart strategically like that to keep the heat from uh, jumping over to the next one so I wanted to point that one last thing out here on these neck boards so all right Get it hooked up to the tube and we'll see what happens. Okay, well, it's on the tube, ready to go. We got all five connections made. Anode, neck, yoke, ground, and video, and of course power. So if you want to count to six, you can, but those are the five you need to have hooked up just to make sure you don't blow something up. And we got our remote board here and I have it on the control panel because there's no plastic case for it. Don't want it to short out to the frame of my workbench. So it's fired up. I couldn't find anything wrong, so I'm imagining that it will turn on. I don't know what's going to happen, whether it uh, will turn on or whether it's got some type of other fault, but uh, obviously it was sent to me because something is wrong, so... But I couldn't find anything initially, so let's turn it on and kind of see what happens now. Hey, turns on. See what we get. It's a bit dark, but that's odd. Maybe someone didn't know how to hook it up, or maybe they had some type of problem in the cabinet. Maybe they had a black screen because their power supply was bad. I don't know. I was just sent all these uh, in a big box that said uh, not working. So all I know is that these are supposed to be not working. Hmm. Let's do some adjustments here. Hmm. Oh. This appears to be not too bad. Each position, right there, let's do some width. Hmm. Well, I'll be, I can't say. Look at that. It appears to work just fine for me. Well, I can't say, <laughs> I can't say. I don't know why this was sent. Obviously they thought it had a problem. Must be something else wrong with their cabinet or their testing procedure or what they're doing, but obviously as you can see, I did nothing to it. Works just fine for me. So we'll scratch that one up or chalk that one up to um, no fault found and we'll continue on with the other four K7500s. So I guess thanks for watching and stay tuned for those.